Recording. Uh, yeah, me and Andy and Outlook. That's where we were. Just me and Andy over there. Now Andy's here. So I don't know what the heck going on. You know, it's it's technology. So there we go. All righty. Hey, before we start, I had this conversation with a trader today, and he was working on his symmetrical triangles. All right. So let me go through this for just a second. I don't want to do that. I got it. Hold on. Uh, so, golly, what's going on here? Well, yeah. hmm. well, the no, there's all kinds of technological problems tonight. Okay. So he was working on symmetrical triangles and he was having trouble. And I want to show you why you get snookered every once in a while. So this is a good time for it to happen. This should normally be an A, B, C. All right. Now notice where this one is. It's above that. You see that? It's not an A, B, C. So it ends up being a triangle. A symmetrical triangle. So you click here and here, right? And then you click the bottom here and you get the 1000 target up here for where that should be. All right. Is everybody getting that? So it didn't do an ABC. It did a triangle instead. And it can, and it can trip you up all the time because you go, oh, there's a triangle. Well, wait a minute. Well, is it an ABC? Oh, it's an AB. No, it's not an ABC. See, because an ABC has to put in a, a, a low lower than that, or it doesn't have to be much. One pip will do it, but it just has to be that. So just just a heads up. That's a, it was a good example that he was having trouble with it today. And I and I and I recognize why it's a trouble, because you do have a triangle and, uh, you know, you do have a triangle and you may have an ABC. So which is it? In this case, it's absolutely an ABC because instead of putting a lower low in, you put a higher low in. That validates the ABC. Where are we going? We're going to the 1000. Grab a uh, swing high, swing low to swing high to swing low right over here. And you'll see the 1000 is where they went to the pip to the 1000. See that? All right. Everybody got that? All right, so it's 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 real world. That's what we try to deal with here is real world. We don't try to deal with theory. And oh, by the way, blah, 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 blah. We deal with real world here, all right? So it's easy to get tripped up on them. Really easy to get tripped on them. That's why you have to do 3,000 of them. You have to do 3,000 ABCs and you have to do three, I mean, 300, 300, 300 ABCs and 300 triangles. And you'll see the difference between the two, all right? All right, everybody got that? Everybody good? Does that help you? Yes, no, maybe. Earth to uh, participants, are there anybody there? Thank you, Joe. <laughs> okay, all right. So now, as, as a reminder, I need feedback. If I ask the question, I need feedback. That's your job. My job is to is to try to run this meeting. Your job is to, is if I ask for feedback, give it to me because I don't know if my mic's on. I don't know any of that kind of stuff, okay? All righty. So first steps first, uh, we go take a look at the uh, announcements for tonight. Let me pull them up here. And New York room page, here we go. All right, so tonight we, we're done with announcements, but tomorrow we got consumer confidence in the dollar index tomorrow morning. Now that means that the dollar will, will slow down, right? And you might notice that I only have one alert tonight. It's on the pound yen, pound dollar, because the, the dollar is gonna be affected by this tomorrow. They'll probably go to sleep on the dollar until after uh, consumer confidence, okay? So always be aware of when these fundies are and what currencies they affect. So it's going to tell you right on it, it says the dollar is going to be affected by this one. All right. Well, this tomorrow, um, this tonight. OK, it may affect it. It may not. But don't be surprised if it does affect it. That's the whole key. All right. All right. So there we go. So that's it. Uh, that's the only thing we got in the New York session to, uh, this week. We got Powell speaking later on this week. Uh, we got a lot of we got a few uh, um, fundies, but nothing is big, big time this week. No non-farm payroll, no FMC and all that kind of stuff. So just be flat in the morning before consumer confidence. All right. All right. 
Next step is to take a look at the IC alerts that I've already sent out. So let me go back here. I had to click and join the meeting here. That was kind of strange. I never had to do that before, but there we go. Uh, alerts. All right. So first thing I do is I came in here this morning, this afternoon, and I said, okay, I got the dollar index down. All right now, you know, it, but I said, I'm waiting. It's not clear yet, but bearish attributes, if it reverses, replot the targets in reverse. So that's your heads up. All right. So let me uh, make sure this stays up here while I do this. All right. All right. So that's the dollar index. Let's go look at the dollar index. What's the dollar doing? The dollar is going up right now. All right. See the rollover. So that means everything I did uh, two hours ago is uh, wrong <laughs> or potentially wrong. See that? All right. So this morning it was coming here. We had a breakout. MACD's pointing down. This is at four o'clock in the afternoon and see what's happened since then. It's pulled back up. All right. So because I'm above the zero line break, here's the key. Always remember this. If I'm above the zero line break, any, any movement against that has got to be considered a pullback. All right. Now it's not always going to be. 100% of the time? Nope, doesn't do that. All right, so there you go. All right, so at this point in time, we have to consider that this is an uh, a continuation to the upside, all right? And so uh, one of the problems that traders deal with, especially when you're new, there are so many nuances, and you go, I can't get a handle on them. You can only get a handle on them if you do the work. If you don't do the work, you won't get a handle on them, all right? Which is where the big, where most traders fail. All right? Now I'm not talking about fast trackers. I'm talking about retail traders. Retail traders do not want to do any work. They want something to tell them we're going up. Give me an indicator that says we're going this. Tell me this. Let me go over to check a guru out who says he's going to do this and all that stuff that they do instead of relying on themselves to learn how the market works, which you will not always learn, but you will learn you will uh, win statistically if you learn how the market works. Your goal in life is to get to sixty five percent win ratio. Well, if I get to 65% win ratio, that means that I'm losing 35 out of 100 trades. That's fantastic. What? Yeah, that's fantastic. You're, you're, you're winning 65 and you're losing 35. So I'm going to change this uh, slope support now that they told me it's different. All right. And it's most likely a channel to the upside. But I don't have that proof yet, all right? But MACD pushing up tells me dollars going up, all right? So let's go see what the charts say, all right? And uh, that means GJ would go down and not up, all right? Now, I have the GJ up. Back to the alerts. And <coughs> back. here we go. All right, I have the GJ as a buy, all right? Now, you can see I'm above the zero line break, but we got lots of bulls, uh, bears here. All right, you can see the symmetrical triangle right here. All right. There's a symmetrical triangle. All right. So once you know you're in a symmetrical triangle, you do what? Nothing. You don't make a position, you don't do anything. Now you're going to get caught in them all the time because after you get in, they form and you go, ah, dad got it. So all you want to do is work your way to break even. Now, why do you do that? Because you want to be available to take the buy or the sell, whichever way they go. So you get to break even. You only take a you only trade a breakout in a symmetrical triangle, and you only do it with entry orders. You never do it with market orders. So where would I do that? Let me blow this up a little bit here. All right. So you can see this top right here. Hold on. This top. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just a second. This top right here. All right. Above there, I'm a buyer. Below here, I'm a seller. Does everybody see that? Everybody see it? Okay. Anybody? That's true, Robin. And that's, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, that's exactly correct. So the yen pairs also can follow the, actually you're talking about the dollar yen at times. They can do that. 
That's exactly correct. And that's why um, trading requires skill. Otherwise, it would be, oh, it's doing this, I'm in. It's doing it, I'm in. No, it requires skill. All right. And Robin has a skill, by the way. She asked, the, I'm sure she asked that question probably to spur the answer, not because she didn't know it, because she knows a lot. All right. So there you go. So you're, when you're in a symmetrical triangle, you do everything you can to get to, to break even. Now, let's, let's, let's look at the clues that are in this chart. All right. So I'm going to, let me make these bigger so you can see them. All right. What are the clues in the charts? All right. So you see the symmetrical triangle. You can see you're above the zero line break. You got bears here, all right? You know the dollar uh, is probably going to the downside. Or it's going to the upside now. Now, what does that tell you? That dollar of that pound yen will go opposite of that, all right? Now, here, prior to this, you can see right in here. You see those wicks right there to the upside? That means every time they come down, they find buyers. They don't find sellers. All right, so now here, here's your dilemma. All right, mm. dollar's going up, pound yen should go down. It's in a symmetrical triangle in an uptrend, in an up channel, and we got wicks on the bottom. What would be the conclusion? That's a question. You answer that. Up or down? What's the conclusion based on that? Up or down? Oh, exactly right. OK, so you're predisposed to the up move at this point in time, yet you have a huge amount of information that says that's not going to work, which is the dollar index. OK, so here's what the dilemma of traders is. I'm glad this happened because the dilemma of traders is they want things to be two plus two equals four, four plus four equals eight. They want that. But the market doesn't give you that. All right. So therefore, that's why entry orders are so important to you. All right. So the question you ask yourself is this. OK, if you can take that top off right there and you break in this area, do I want to be in that in that trade? If the answer is yes, you place your entry orders now. If you go, you know what, I think it's going to follow the dollar index. Do I want to be in this trade down here? If the answer is yes, you place your entry orders here. All right. Now you don't want to hedge. You want to you want to wait until you figure it out. All right. So what is it telling you? It says sit on your hands until you get some more information. But the information right now is we are going up, and they can do that even if the dollar goes down. I mean up. They can do that. <sighs> No, the wicks on the downsides mean they're finding, finding buyers, they're finding buyers, they're finding buyers. Let me blow it up even bigger, Chris, so you can see it. Right. That's a good question. All right. So there you go. All right. Now take a look at these. Do you see them now, Chris? What do they see? Every time we go down, we find buyers. Every time we go down, we find buyers. Every time we go down, we find buyers. All right. So that's the problem with this this uh, this opportunity. They find buyers in in direct opposition of the dollar index. So what do you do? Sit on your hands. But you can see if they could ever do this, pull above these tops. They're definitely telling you or you're a buyer. So if you decide, I like that trade, then you put your entry order in right in here. See? All right. You don't trade a symmetrical triangle with a market order. You only trade it with a, a entry order. And let me show you that. And this is the first alert. It's okay. Uh, you know, this is what the, this is what tonight's about. It's about it, it's about defining things. It's not about, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's trying to define things. So let's go to, um, uh, I don't have any internet up. Maybe I do, wait a minute. Oh, I don't have any internet up. Hold on just a second. I got internet up, but I don't have any browser up. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to chartpatterns.com and I'm gonna work with a symmetrical triangle right here. All right, this is a symmetrical triangle, all right? So the statistical probability is if I came in going up, I'm going out, going up. 
If I come in going down, I'm going out going down. All right. You see that? All right. So that's the statistical probability. And this site, the reason, one of the reasons I use this site, it's the first site I ever used in 2001. 2001. So now we're sitting here 2024. In 23 years, it's not been wrong. You know, occasionally it's wrong. That's true. But statistically, it's never been wrong. All right. And you can read all about it there. All right. So the statistical probability is if I came into this, I mean, I'll scrunch these down. If I, uh, if the symmetrical triangle, if I came into the symmetrical triangle going up, then the higher probability is I'm going up. All right. Everybody understand that? Uh, well, you know, here's the problem, Chris. Yes, you have, yes, yes, you have, yes. you have, you have, to do it. you have currencies. I mean, you have patterns that morph into another one. All right. Let me just shut the mics off. All right. Hold on, that makes sense. All right. So, if you want a mic, let me know. I just shut everybody off. Okay. All right. So here's the here's the dichotomy. All right. The dichotomy is all right. What is it? Is it a bear flag? Okay, now a bear flag, when you do 300 of them, you know it's a very methodical move. This is great, by the way. By the way, this is great, All right? Everybody's, uh, we're asking very realistic questions. A bear flag is a very methodical move. It rarely does that, but it almost always does the ABC, all right? It's a very methodical move. Could I get this right here, Chris? Could I get this in here? Does that look the same? And I'm, by the way, I'm not picking on Chris. Anybody who asks a question, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to point you out. All right. I watched, by the way, I watched a phenomenal video today with Steve Harvey. All right. Steve Harvey was, he had a, he was a stutterer. And he was a black child in, in a poor middle, middle class place. And uh, his teacher came to him and, and to all the students said, I want you to write your name and what you want to be when you grow up. And so he wrote down, I want to be on TV. And sh she kept him to the last. She pulled him up at the end of the class and humiliated. Do you think anybody's going to uh, uh, have a, st a stutterer on TV? Has anybody in this neighborhood ever gone to TV? Has anybody in this uh, vicinity ever gone to TV? You're crazy. You know what he does now? Every year, he sends her a brand new flat screen TV so she can watch him on TV. <laughs> It was so great. I was just, if you can look up that video, you need to watch that video. And he's talking about imagination, about how if you envision, if you're given, an, uh, if your imagination says, I can be a trader, then where did that come from? And you go talk to your buddies and you say, I think I'm going to go trade the forks and say, ah, you're crazy. Nobody can make money doing that, blah, 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 blah. Well, here's the point he makes. See, he, they weren't given that imagination. He was, but nobody else was. All right. And so they're always going to poo-poo you. Uh, yeah, you're crazy. You can't be a forex trader. Nah, you can't be a television personality. You stutter. You're a black kid. You're uh, you're you're from a poor neighborhood. You've been living in your car for three years. How are you going to get on television? Well, he's on television every day, all right? Because he was given the imagination or the dream that it could happen, and he fulfilled it. All right. Same thing here. There's no difference. There's no difference. All right. So back to reality here, all right? That's not a bear flag, all right? Now, if this had come down here like this, Chris, okay? Down like this, up like this, down like this, up like this, down like this, all right? Now we could get a bear flag out of it, but I can't get a bear flag out of that, see? So that's part of the process of doing the 3,000, I mean 3,000, the 300 is to, to, to your brain to go, I got this, I got this, I got this. I'm not going to confuse a symmetrical triangle with a bear flag or a bull flag or whatever it happens to be, see? So so th this, ho this whole piece, Chris, here's the problem. This whole piece belongs to each other. This whole piece belongs to each other. This whole piece belongs to each other. That's a bull flag. This whole piece belongs to, each, to itself. All right? You see that? Each of these is pieces of the puzzle. 
All right. Here we had a, a, a continuation plan. Then we had a, cl a close and reverse where we had a uh, bear, a bull flag. There it is. All right. So that resulted in this. What do we got now? We got a triangle. We got in it going up. That means we anticipate going up. But MACD is telling you, you better be careful. See, it's all about putting the pieces of the puzzle to uh, in play today. All right. So I when I get into a symmetrical triangle, I am I I, I get rid of the bias. All right. I get totally rid of the bias and I go, you can go up and you can go down. I don't care what you do because I'm not going to trade you till you prove it. But right now, my bias is to the upside, right? Because of the symmetrical triangle going up, right? Now, here's the problem. That's, I, that's absolutely opposite of the dollar index, which is correlated to, right? So this is when you sit on your hand. This is when you know, okay, I'm going to sit on my hands. I'm not going to do anything, all right? And then you go and you start to test your theory, all right? My theory is that we're going to go up. And the chart says, uh, you might do that, but you got bias to the downside. Uh, the order flow is coming into the downside. Uh, we, we, we're, we're neutral here. Nothing's happening here. Let me get rid of this and see what the confirmer says. The confirmer says, if you're in the buy, you need to hold it. That's what the confirmer said. All right. So this is all information. None of this is tradable. What does this say? You're going down. What does this say? You're going down. What does this say? You're going down. All right. Now let's put the information together. Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. We're going nowhere. We're, we might go down. We possibly are going down, and we're in a symmetrical triangle. So now, what do the clues tell you? I'm not going to ask Chris because he asked a question, and I'll make it look like I'm, I'm picking on Chris, which I'm not. Uh, so what does the information tell you now? Up or down? Come on. You guys were quick the last time. Everybody said, wait, there you go, Larry. Uh, yeah, down. That's what it tells us. Uh, and Larry's right. Wait, wait, wait until you got information. Now, once I get this information here, what do I want to do? I want to get rid of my bias to the upside. So what I got to do is I got to get rid of that. All right. Uh, and I, I've got to pre-plan this, I may just redo, the, redo this to the downside. Leave that there. It's 100, 228 pip ATR. All right. So this would be the high for the day. So I'm going to go down for 228 pips. All right. Now I'm prepared. Either way it works, 228. All right. And there's the target here. All right. Now, it's a symmetrical triangle. So I have to decide uh, if it's you see the bears are here and MACD is telling you. So here's the clues right now. MACD says you're going down and that says you're going down. Could I place an entry order on the breakout right here, right there for the downside move with an entry order here? Could I do that right now? Tell me, what do you think? Hey, we've only done our first alert here. This is great. This is awesome. This is fantastic. All right. Because you're going to be face with it every single day. Yes, I can do that. I can do that. All right. And then what if I find a green candle screaming up here? Could I get rid of these and put an entry order here and an entry order here? Just two entry orders up. Could I do that? One third of my lots and two thirds of my lots for that target. Would that be a heck of a trade? Yeah. Would that be a heck of a trade? Yeah. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for them to prove it, not me. I don't get biased. Bias is one of the number one things you got to get out of your head. I think it's going up, man. I think it's going down. You're in trouble already because you think your thinker gets you in trouble. The chart says we're going up. The chart says we're going down. All right. So what does the chart say? The chart says we haven't made a decision yet. Therefore, I know what to do. Sit on my hands. Is everybody following that? Everybody following that? Yes? No? Okay. Now, all right, John, if it breaks to the downside, would I be valid in doing this? All right. Swing high, swing low, 
swing high to find the fibs to the downside en route to the target. Would that be a valid uh, process for me as the next step once it proves what it is? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, what if it breaks north? Okay. Andy, would I be valid? Would it be valid for me to go swing low? Oh, come on. All right. And by the way, I'm not picking on them. I'm just, you know, makes it more interesting. If I did this and said, I'm going to trade that to the upside with an entry order here and an entry order here, would I be able to do that? Yes, because the chart gives me, yeah, good, Andy. So the chart tells me what to do once it's told me what it's doing. Let me say that again. The chart tells me what to do once it tells me what, is, where it's, what it's doing. Gee, that's monumental. Wait for the chart to tell you what it's doing. And then you got, it only took a second to put that on. I don't need to worry about, am I going to miss this trade? I'm not going to miss this trade. It took one second to do that. All right. See, all right. Now what happens to traders is they get biased and they go plan the up move or they go plan the down move, down move. And then what the market makers do, they know that and they go, okay, let's put a wick down here and then let's do that. And you were committed because you were biased. And what did you do? You had to sell. And they raked it there. Has anybody ever been in one of those? Anybody besides me ever been in something like that? <laughs> yeah. So what was the problem? Me. The market is always right. Me, I went and said, I'm buying into that. I'm biting that big bill boy off and I'm going to eat that hot dog like it's a Nathan Coney hot dog and I'm in a contest. That's what I do. And I buy into it and it hasn't proved anything at all. Not one thing. All right? And they do this all the time. All right? And I'll prove it to you. Let's just go back to this last one over here. All right? So you can see here, I got a bear flag right there. Notice the wick. Notice the wick. Two wicks down there. So what happened? All right, MACD pointing down. Are you thinking sell? Are you thinking sell? Question. This is great. This is great. All right. In fact, it may be a little pennant to the downside. You're thinking sell. And you see the market moves to the downside. Right here, right here. MACD says you're down. If you bite on that, you just got whacked. You see that? You see how you got whacked? What was your problem? The, the, the market's always right. So it's not the market. What did they do? They snookered you. They say, look at, we're going down, man. We're going down. Look at the red candles. We're going down. We're going down. And look what they did. They creamed everybody who bought into that on that candle right there. They creamed them, just creamed them. So who did that? The dumb money does that. That's what the dumb money does. Because this big red candle to the downside with a close in reverse turned every indicator to the downside, including ours, including the MACD. Right there, it is. So, what was more important? Structure is the most important thing. If I'm above the zero line break, any move to the downside has to be considered a pullback. Huh? And still, that's exactly right, Robin. See, any movement to the downside has to be considered a pullback to go again. And sure enough, that's what they proved to you. Pullback. What does the MACD say? We're going to go again. There they go. And they don't get anywhere. So they do this, all right? Now, you're starting to see, look what we got here. Everybody see that? They broke it out while we're sitting here talking, all right? Now, that is, that's what I told you. I said, that's what the pattern does, okay? But I got to not get biased just because the pattern says we're doing that doesn't mean I get biased. The pattern says we're going to go up. All right, so I got to figure out the place that says, okay, uh, uh, yeah, well, I did that. See, I took I took the swing low, the swing high, and the swing low right here, Chris. 
You see that right there? Swing low, swing high, swing low for the targets. There's the 1,000, there's the 618. All right, now, have I, oh, the trade's going, I missed it. No, you got to wait for a break, cook, and go, or you got an entry order already in, all right? So the way you trade a symmetrical triangle is an entry order here and an entry order here. How do I do that? Okay, so a whole trade is here, all right? Trade one is here, entry order. Trade two is here with an entry order. You see that? All right. So I, I talked to the market tonight and said, okay, I'm going to talk about this tonight because I'm going to be here and I'd like you to cooperate, Mr. Market. And they said, okay, we'll do that for you, Scott. <laughs> do you believe it? <laughs> yeah, right. All right. But what they did was they broke it to the upside, which was what they should have done. All right. But we had a lot of information saying we're going down. Now, take a look here. What does that tell you? It's about pulling the little pieces of the market together. They're clues. All right. All of you remember um, the um, what's that game where you some, somebody shot somebody in the parlor with a with a gun or they knifed them or they hit them with a land. Or what, I, I can't even remember what the game was. Clue. There you go. It's clue. All right. What do we got to do? We got to pull the clues out of the chart. All right. So there you go. All right. So now it's saying, hey, by the way, we are going up. Am I in a hurry to get in this? I don't need to be in a hurry. I don't have to be here right now. Why? Because I can't buy at the top. See, this is when your rule comes in. I can't buy at the top at a 382 fib. Can I buy there? No. I have two choices now. Here's my choice. A break hook and go, or pull it back and then go. Those are the only two choices. If it does either one of those, I can trade it. If it doesn't do that, I'm done. What if it goes screaming up here? I'm done. I don't have the trade unless I had entry orders in and entry orders in. And that's why you put entry orders in because you don't know when they're going to do that right there. You don't know when they're going to do that right there. See, All right? everybody following me? We've only done one alert, <laughs> by the way. We've only done one alert. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that helped. I hope that helped everybody because it's great when it happens live. You're not going to see this many times live. You're going to see it after the fact, but you're rarely going to see it alive. Uh, uh, no, but what an alert that is. <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's go to the next one. What's it got for us? Pound dollar, okay? Now, I have it up because the dollar is going down. Remember, the dollar is no longer going down. It's possibly going up. Is that convincing? Does that convince you that they're going up? No, it doesn't. But, uh, uh, could be, yeah. Uh, does that convince you? No. But what are the, that's when you fall back on your rules, by the way, Chris. Okay, so my rules are, if I'm, this is why rules are so important. If I'm above the zero line break and I get a pullback, it's got to be considered a pullback, not a reversal. Okay, so that's the first thing. So what should I conclude on this? I got two histograms going up. I got a channel going up and I got candles going up. All right. Now, what's the problem? Dollars going up. All right. So here's your problem. Can pound dollar and dollar yeah and and the dollar index go both go up? Can they do that? Can they do that? They can, but only about one percent of the time. One percent of the time. So in this case, I have to go against the information that's here and say, that's a pullback to go down. And why? Because the dollar index is going up. So therefore, the trade should be to the downside, not to the upside. Have they proved that? No. Nope. Where do I? Where do they prove it? If they can break, hook, and go out of here, then they can do that. Should I change my position at this point? I should not. 
I should leave it alone until they give me more information. Where will they give me more information? They bounce off the fib, come down here like this. Then they do a break, hook, and go. Then I'm a seller. They come down here and bounce off that to the upside. Then I'm a buyer. You see that? So what's my job? Wait. Uh, could be. Yeah. Wait. All right. So back to that pound dollar. All right. Here we go. All right. So dollar is now going up which means pound dollar should go down. So you go, okay, all right, what are the clues? Are there bears here? Are there bears here? Yes, no. It's all about clues. It's not about being a trader. It's about figuring out the clues. If you figure out the clues, you'll be a trader. What does MACD say? All right. So... Everybody shut up for a while there, all right? So based on these two clues, should I consider the up or the down? Because I'm in an up channel, all right? So I go with the up until it proves it's not down, all right? That's right. So when, do, when will I be a seller? I will be a seller here. This is a great, this is a great class, man. I will be a seller here. All right. Once it comes down here, takes this support out right here to the downside, then I get rid of this and I get rid of anything to the upside, get rid of this, I get rid of this, and I go to the downside because that matches the correlation. All right. So because the dollar has, is not going down, it's possibly going up. And I gave you a heads up ahead of time saying, I'm waiting on this dollar because it's definitely not clear. All right, back to that. All right. There we go. I'm waiting. Not clear yet, but bearish attributes. If it reverses, replot the targets in reverse. This is why I do this. I'm trying to give you a heads up. All right. So I always go with the continuation until it proves it's not going to continue. All right. Now that's hard. Wait a minute. <clears throat> I don't like that. I got to wait. I want to trade. No, you don't want to trade. You want to trade when it's right for your trade. All right. So the target is up there at 3440, and we're running out of space here because of that big move right there. Goes back down, bounces. You have that trade. All right. Let's go back to the alerts. Let's go to the next one, which is here, which is the Swiss yen. Uh, fast becoming one of my favorite currencies. What's it telling you? Bears are here, but they're trying to push it up. MACD, I'm above the zero line break. So I know I'm a buyer. See, remember, this determines what you are. If you're above the zero line break, you're potentially a buyer. If you're below the zero line break, you're potentially a seller. All right? Doesn't mean you sell. That just means that you are. All right, let's dissect this. What is that? Everybody see that? What's that? Answer it. I'm going to make you all work tonight. I got to work. You got to work. What is it? ABC to continue. Thank you, Andy and John. Okay. So you're heads up that they're trying to continue. All right. Now, you see this big candle here. Nice candle. That's perfect. MACD says you're a buyer. There's the opportunity. Are you salivating? Yeah. What do I got to do? I need that trade right there, which is actually trade two now because trade one was here. That was trade one. That's trade two right there. All right. So some of you may be in that. All right. Now, Swiss yen. We know the pound yen is trying to maybe go up. All right. We know the Swiss yen is trying to maybe go up, but we also know the dollar is trying to go up. So now we got two currencies saying we're going up and we have the dollar saying it's going up, which now gives us a problem here. Is this really trying to go up? See, is it really trying to go up or is it pulling back to go down? See, so everything creates a question on other things. Everything creates a new question. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You've seen why a trader has to use their entire brain. This is not for the weak. 
This is not for the people looking for, yeah, the, mo the MACD just crossed over me, and I'm in. Now, my slow stochastic just went up. Oh, you know, all that doesn't work. None of that works, right? What does the chart say is the key, right? So back to the Swiss yen. What does it tell you? We're going to go up, all right? Now, it was a buy. It's a good lesson tonight. God, I love it when the market says, let me, let me show you what we're doing. Entry price is 169.62, which is already at 169.80. All right, so I had to break that. There's the trade. I mean, I did it a long time ago, three hours ago, four, um, almost four hours ago. Well, more than that. Four hours ago, four hours plus ago, I put this in. All right. How do you say, how does Scott figure out where the market's going? I just read charts. I'm not a guru. I don't know what the market's going to do. I have no clue. All I got is what the chart says it can do. All right. That's it. And I got to figure that out based on that. That's why it's so important that you realize that gurus are not gurus. They're pretty good guessers, but they're not gurus. All right. So, if I could break this line right here, would that interest you? Here's the question. Would that interest you right there? 120 pips. All right. Why do I got to be above here? Because of this top, this top, and this top. I got to prove that I'm, I'm, I'm can break in that area. See, the chart says if you can break in that area, there's your trade. But if you can't break in that area, don't even think about it. See? All right. It's great. This is a fantastic night. I don't know what happened, but the market's just saying, well, I told you, I sent them an old email and say, I'm going to do a class tonight. So would you all cooperate? And they said, okay, we'll do that for you, Scott. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Next one. And last one is right here. Swiss. Oh, that's Swiss Yen. Where was the other one? I missed one. Right. You're Aussie. Right. Now, your Aussie, I have down. It's a sell. Right? So I have it as a sell right? at 162.40. 162.40 right there. Right? There's the trade. What's it telling you right now? Is it telling you they can do it? Is it can tell you you can do it? Why did I choose a sell? What does the MACD say? What does the MACD say? Buy or sell? What does it say? It says sell. So I'm not leaving, I'm not considering a buy. The MACD says sell. Look at that candle. It's 35, it's 40 pips inside. Can I trade this now? Oh, I'm gonna go jump in. No, I can't do that because I got rules that say I can't sell at the bottom. So it's got to pull back up. If it pulls back up, right to here, right there, trade one is there. Trade two is below that wick right there. All right. Will I make some pretty good money? This is where I move my stop right there at the 618. I only move if I have a, a, a mathematical reason to do so. All right. What's the chart saying? We're going to go down. MACD says, we're going to go down. Now I said, well, you know, I need more confirmation. Okay. More confirmation than, than price action. Let's go look at it. What does it say? Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. Get rid of this for a minute. All right. Yeah, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. We're up. Ooh, baby, baby, baby. Come to Papa. Look at that. What does that tell you it's going to do? Go up or go down? Well, it's green going up, man. What does it tell you? Tell me what it tells you. Down. Exactly right, John. It says we're going to turn over. We can't move as fast as the five. But we're going to roll over. That's what it tells you. Anybody interested in that trade? There it is, right there. That's right there in front of you. All right. See, it's all about pulling the clues together. Now, this chart has different clues than the other chart did. We didn't have this three, the, the pato over there in the, on the other charts. All right. But you got a big candle here to the downside, and you got that, and that, and that, and that, and that. So what are we doing? We're making it harder. We're not taking the clues at face value 
and deciding based on multitudes of clues, not one, not two, not three, five, six, seven clues that says we're going down. All right. So I got to understand that. That's the job. I'm, that's my job is to understand that. All right. All right. Almost a royal flush. If that turns over red, it's going to be red, 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 red. Gee, I wonder if it's going down. I don't know. Uh, can I sell it here? No, I can't sell it here because I got a rule. See, that's when rules come in and say, don't even think about it. But you're welcome to go to the 10-minute chart and wait for the pullback. Oh, my gosh, there's the pullback. It comes up to here, right here where the support is right there. Anybody have any fear about taking that to the downside? Because that's what it's got to do. Right now, could it turn here? It could absolutely turn here because of the support right here. So, if it turned here, would you have any fear about taking that trade? No, because the chart says sell it, not Scott, not Bill, not Robin, not Steve, not John. What does it say? If you turn here, I'm in. That's what it tells you. That's what it tells you. All right. Rinker, yeah, that's true. Got to do that. I pull this up to here because that's the new high for the day. Yeah, Larry's on always on top of this. Come on, there we go. There we go. All right, so there's the new target. Right, I got when it gets up here, I have sixty-five, seventy pips. If it turns here, I'll barely have sixty pips. All right, that's okay. Now, what do I need? Uh, I need a place to move my stop. Where do I move the stops? I don't know. Where do you move your stops? Okay. We can we find the swing high right here. Find the swing low right here. Find the swing high right here. And it tells me they know the 1,000. See, they reacted at the 1,000. That means they know the 1,270 and the 1,618. And they know the uh, limit here. And the 1,270 is way down here. So I know... Because of, of, of what the chart says, not Scott. If it pulls here, whether it turns here or it goes all the way to here and turns, doesn't matter. All right? Trade one is here. Trade two is here to the target. All right? Either place, it's trade one up here and trade two. All right? Is everybody following? Everybody good? All right, good. All right. So, ooh, look at that wick. They they sold. As soon as they got up here, they sold. You see that? There's pent-up demand. Uh, if you're on top of that, you're already in. If you're not, now you hope it comes back up again. Uh, if it doesn't come back up again, all you got is an entry order down here, below the 1,000. That's all you got. All right. All right. So that was, wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> Just fantastic. I, uh, man, I, I I don't get many nights like this where I get to do this, but this is a good night. This is a good night for training. I don't know if it's going to be a night, good night for trading. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that email evidently worked, Joe. <laughs> I sent it to HSBC and Bank of America, and they're obviously helping. Look at that sucker. It's just flat going. That's all there is to it. Just absolutely it's got lots of pent up demand here. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Right. My dealer station. Fix Synergy's freaking out on me here. So I gotta give it a second. I gotta pull up anyway. But that was see, that candle went up 30 pips and it has already come down 30 pips. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, let's go find the real estate of the month of the week trade. All right, so how do we do this? All right, first thing we do is we take a look at the big ATRs. All right, so what we're looking for is currencies that can get up and go. We're not interested in currencies that can go up and go five pips. We're interested in big ATRs. So you can see right here, all right, we go here. We got Aussie yen. We got 132 pips on the Aussie yen. Uh, down here in the swish in, I got 145 pips. That means you can go five 
500, 600 pips in the next three or four days. Uh, so Swiss Yen gives me an opportunity. Euro Aussie's 99. It's close. But Euro Yen is 175 pips. Euro New Zealand is 113 pips. Pound Yen, uh, Pound Aussie is 106. And Pound Yen is 228. And Pound New Zealand is 112. And that should be it. Oh, whoa, we got a dollar yen and 182 pips. All right. So those are the currencies we're looking for for a swing for a swing trade. Now, why do we look for big currencies? Because we're looking for five, six, seven, eight hundred pips. We're not looking for a currency that's doing 50 pips, and at the end of the day, at the end of the week, they're going to go 200 pips. We're looking at five, six, seven hundred pips. All right. So the first thing we do is we start. Over here on the pound yen, we just take them one at a time. All right. Oh, hold on. That back. So you can see that pound yen is out off the off the market because we only got this to the top, and then we'll probably do a sell. So you, what you would do is you would go, okay, I'm going to trade this intraday here. But when I get up here, I'm going to look at a big trade all the way down to here. All right? So what you're looking for is it's not here yet. Go up here and sell off here. And if you, can, if you get that, you don't want to miss that. Now, it's not here yet because we're going up tonight. All right? So that's not here tonight. Let's go look at EJ. Should look exactly the same. And uh, it's sort of not, sort of, sort of, maybe not. A lot of bears in play You're below the zero line break. Uh, uh, that's correct, Chris. You're very close right there. All right. So, uh, so, Chris, how do you trade this? Oh, yeah. How do you trade this? All right. You're a trader. All right. What do I do? I go up here and put a, an entry order for a sell limit right there at the at the uh, day chart top, which is at 193.57. I put a trade in at 197.56, all right, with a stop above the, the, the ATR, all right? So this is my risk, all right? This is my risk. This is my reward. That's what you do. Yeah, but you don't know if you're going to win on that. You don't know if you're going to win on any trade. So get that out of your head. All right? That's what the chart says we could do. When we hit that day chart top with a 1270 and a 1000 fib and whatever else is up there, we're going to sell off that. There will be tons and tons of sell limits sitting there. Right now, there are sell limits sitting there. Do you want to join them? That's the question. All right. You're not you, you might be interested in the buy to the top. And if you are, leave your entry order in and trade it to the top and then get out of the trade. Let the let the, the entry order go. All right. That's what you do. Why? Because the clues tell you that. What does the clues say? It says if we get another move, it's the last one. Is it, you see that, Chris? It's the last one. No matter how high this thing goes up here. No matter how high this goes up here, this cannot follow because it's got to come up like this. I mean, let me get rid of that. Get the right to. In order to follow that, the MACD, where oh, it's got to get the right tool right, right here. No, it's going to have to come up here and break through there to break up there. See? So, what are the clues in the chart? Sell it there. That's what it tells you, Chris. Sell it. Do not, you can buy it up to there, but you got to be ready for the sell because that's where the big trade is. See? Uh, does that make sense, Chris? Question. Okay. And see, the professional trader won't miss that. He'll miss the, he, he will not miss the buy and he won't miss the sell. All right. Because it's about, statistical probability. What do they do at a day chart top? They respect it. Even if they only pull back 80, 90 pips, you'll make 80, 90 pips, and they might go back up and break it, all right? But they're still going to pull off it. Therefore, put your entry order in. See, that's what traders got to do. You got to be proactive about this whole thing. All right. So, GJ, 
when later on after we get the pull up might have a move to the downside your yen should be the very same all right let's go through a 240 and look at it all right so you can see that although we have a top way up here we also have a top right here all right so the trade today is only up to there all right now macd is pointing down chris you see that um, by the way i'm not picking on chris Okay, I'm not picking on Chris. Uh, so MACD is pointing down. If I get the buy up here, I don't expect it. I don't because MACD is already going down. I don't expect it to go up here. I expect it maybe to go up there and sell off to here. All right. So this is another place to put a sell limit. All right. For that real estate that we trade. All right. It's not here now. All right. So you got to wait. All right. Let's go look at UJ. Uh, UJ just going side side sideways. Uh, let's go take a look at this. Okay, so we are already at top. We've already broken out the top here. Dollars going up. Let me take this off. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to simplify. I want to simplify. I don't want to add all this crap. I want to simplify. I want to get rid of stuff that may have a meaning and may not. Okay. By the way, I did trade that. Did pretty well. On it didn't get very much, but I didn't do okay on it. All right, so now what do we look at it? We go okay. We got a flag pattern. The continuation to the upside. Does everybody see that? I'm above the MACD, right? So I'm above the MACD. So I'm officially a buyer, right? I'm a buyer. All right, where are we going if we go up? All right, that's the question. Where are we going? All the way up to here. Wow, that's a big monster. Let me look at this again. I'm going to 360, get less candle. All right, so I'm going to target this top here, All right? That's it. That's a long way up there. Ooh, we run out of T30s. Look at that. All right, so that's too far. So what I'm going to do, all right, is I'm going to put a line on here and target this top, not the big top, All right? So, all right. So now it's just a simple matter of pulling the calculator down and say, okay, here's the calculator. All right. The top is at 140.28. 140.28. Subtract where I am right now, 143.81. 143.81 equals 353 pips. All right, so it's not big enough to do a real estate of the week trade, but it's big enough to do an intraday trade up there. All right, so that doesn't that doesn't meet our criteria. We're looking at five, six, seven hundred pips. All right, AJ, what do you got for us? Right. AJ, trying to move to the upside. All right, we'll go up here at two forty. Take a look at it. All right, so you can see the top is right here. It's only about a hundred pips away. So there's no trade on the AJ. All right, this is where you consider a sell limit. See, if you'd have considered a sell limit over here, how did you do? Pretty good. All right. Should I consider a sell limit here with 20 pips maybe for that? I should do that. That's what I should do. Yeah, but you know if you're going to win on that trade. I don't know if I'm going to win on any trade. I know that if they take it down, I want to be in it. See, that's the whole crack, the whole key. Is if it take it down and I get I'm there at the top, I have got the least amount of risk for the total with the biggest reward. So I place the entry order. 85% of your trades are entry orders, folks. If you're still looking for market orders, you're still a retail trader. All right. All right. So that's not one. All right. We go over here to uh CJ. All right, where are we going? All right, we pull this up to a big chart. I'm looking for the top, and the top is right here. It's only 150, 200, uh, maybe 300 pips away. It's not a real estate of the week trade. But would this be a real estate of the week trade off the top? All right, would that be a real estate of the week trade off the top? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So it comes up here, put an entry order in, and you're in already with a very low risk, all right, with one third of your lots. All right, so it's not a real estate that we trade yet, but it may be later this week. All right, let's go to the pound Aussie. All right, pound Aussie just going sideways. Don't even bother with the currency going sideways. Don't even think about it. 
you're in New Zealand. It's not trending. All right. Ooh, your New Zealand is trending. All right. So we go up to the 240, take a look at it and see where are we in this move? Uh, well, we're pretty close to the bottom here and we got another bottom here, but no matter what, it's still only 300 pips away. It's not a real estate of the week trade. All right. So pound New Zealand. All right. Where are we doing? We're just going sideways. No trade here. Not a real estate of the week. There's an intraday trade, but there's not a real estate of the week trade because that's the bottom right there. All right. So that's pound New Zealand. All right. So I don't see anything there. So now we're going to have to do one from the top to the bottom. I do like this EJ. All right. Because it's very close. All right. So let me clean it up here a little bit. Ah, I didn't want to do that. Get rid of this. I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Get rid of anything that could bias you one way or the other. Get it as clean as you can and as, as uh, well, come on. And as, as the least amount of information, less is more in the Forex. Yeah, but you got a day chart top and you got this and you got the don't even think about that crap. All right, I'm going to get rid of this, in fact. So now I got a lane chart with a top and a bottom on. All right, I'm going to pop a fib from the swing low to the swing high. Why? Because I'm going up right there. All right, stop. Do they know the fibs? 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 Yeah, I know the fibs. All right, so what I'm looking for now is this. Come up to the top and sell off to the downside, right? All right. Now, it may sell off here because they've already shown you, yep, we could be going down from here, all right? So you go, okay, let me let me see what that looks. Put a slope support across the bottom right here. And you can see you've got a breakout. So this may be already underway. All right. If it breaks out and goes to here, Wow, that would be a nice opportunity. Let's go figure it out. All right, so we're on a euro yen, and it's 175 pip ATR, as you can see. All right, so how much room do we got here? Let's go down to the calculator, and we got, uh, we're currently at 159.68, 159.68. The bottom down here is 153.73, 17, sorry, 17 equals, aha, uh I got 651 pips to the downside, 651 pips, right? So that's what I'm going to figure on, all right? Now, I don't know, let me get rid of that, but I don't know where that came up there. I don't know if it's going to pop here and bounce up. I don't know that. All right, it's got a day chart top here. All right, so you know it could go up there and do that, but if it it's already broken here, if it goes to the downside, if it goes to the downside, can I see the trade? Yep, there's the trade. Oh, it's actually bigger than that. Hold on, like that, way down here. All right, so what I'm going to do is find, put a fib on from the swing high to the swing low to the swing high. I got a double top. Do they need a double top? All right. So the question is, do they need a double top? They put the money in here. They put the money in here. First money came out here. Second money came out here. So yes, if they want to go, they can do that. See that? All right. If they want to go, they can do it. All right. But we still have upside potential. Upside potential. All right. So where would the entry orders go in? So the actual trade is here. This is the trade. All right. This is no man's land. Right in here is no man's land. You don't know if it's going up. You don't know if it's going down. You don't know anything. All right. But if you break into this area down to the downside, that's trade one. That's trade two. That's trade three. And actually it could be trade three and trade four. See, the chart tells you how to trade it. All right. All right. So if you break to the bottom... I got 657 pips. That's a real estate of the week trade. How much could I make of that? Trade one will make you 650 pips if you hold it to the bottom. Trade two will make you uh, 550 pips. Trade three will make you uh, 300 pips. Trade four will make you 200 pips. 
add them all up, you're you're over four or five thousand pips. All right. Now you know about it now. You're already ahead of the game. You're already planning it out. You're already doing. Where do, where can I place an entry order? You take that bottom off, I'm in. You take that bottom off because that's the bounce point to go up there. So if they break, hook, and go right there, you're a seller. Entry order, entry order, entry order, entry order, and to the target. When do I put these entry orders in? When do I put them in? Case here. Okay, when do I put those entry orders in? Now. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, now. You put them in right now. You don't wait. You put them in now. If it goes, you're in. If it doesn't, you might not be here. You may be taking your wife to her husband to lunch. I don't know what you're doing. You might be at a PTA meeting. You put them in now, right? Because they're telling you we can do it. Why can we do? How can we say they're doing that? Because we got lower highs. We're making lower highs. We're making lower highs. Down is what we're looking for, right there. Uh, now, the key to trading a real estate of the week trade is trade one. Wherever you get trade one, if you want to take, uh, you know, be a little more aggressive, you take it up here. If you want to be safe, you take it down here. Then you got this one. Then you got this one. And then you got this one. All right. So these are all entry orders. If you decide to take this, that's fine. If you decide to take this, it depends on your skill level. If you, you say, I don't want to wait. Till, I'm going to wait till it gets here. Fine. Put an entry order in. Put an entry order and put an entry order. Now, trade one does not come off till here. No matter what it does, all the way up or down, right? So you can see over here, when we looked at the over here, we got down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down. And what do they do? You got to live through those pullbacks, those pullbacks, and that pullback as it comes down here. Maybe it comes down here and bounces and does this and all that. Now, the thing about it is it'll give you extra opportunities. If it bounces here and pulls back up here, you can enter another position here. Comes down here and bounces here and comes up to here. You can add a position here, leaving your entry orders in. So you may get four, five, six, eight, 10, 12 trades in there. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. All right. And you're about to learn the most thing about yourself as a trader. If you trade that the first time, you will learn what kind of a trader you are because you will probably be freaked out because you're looking at the currency and it says, we're going to pull back 110 pips. What does your right brain say? Your right brain says, bail, put it in the bank. And you got to be disciplined to say, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. And the reason for that is very simple. Right? If it comes down, I don't know how it's coming to come down, bounces here, Pulls up here like this. I got an entry order here. I got an entry order here. I got an entry order here. Pulls back up here. What can I do here? What can I do right there? Can I add a position? Could I add a position? Question. I don't know how it's going to go. Yes, I can add a position. It comes down here and it comes like this and bounces off this and pulls up there like that. Okay. Could I add a position here? Even though I got my entry orders down there. Yes. All right. Comes down there, takes me in. All of a sudden, it pulls back to here. That's okay. My stop. I'm not in a hurry to move my stop. When I get this trade under and it gets all the way down to here, my stop will be here. This is where my stop will be. Then it makes it turn down. Then I'll move my stop down to here. Right there. All right. I get down to here. What if it bounces here? I'm fine. And I could add a position here. So in the process of coming down, which is just like over here, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. All right. What do they do? If you'd add a position here, add a position here, add a position here, add a position here, add an entry order here, entry order here, and an entry order here, you'd have made eight, eight trades to the downside and pulled out about 5,000 pips. All right. Now, what's the average retail trader doing? Five to eight. All right. We've all been there. We all got the T-shirt, so we can't point fingers at anybody else. Everybody here, including me, has done it. All right. So your job is to hold trade one 
Do not be in a hurry to to get your trade uh, in the profit. All you want to do is get to break even wherever you take it. When you get significant profit, maybe you move your stop for the rest of the trade. All right. Hardest thing you're ever going to do is trade that to the downside in trading. That's going to be the hardest thing you ever do. But if you do it and you make pips and you execute, you've arrived. You have arrived. All right. All right. Man, we went a while here, but that was okay. It was a good lesson. Everybody good with this lesson tonight? Did we learn it? some stuff? Did we? Was it a good time? Yeah. Okay, John. Good. Uh, it was worth the short wait. There you go, Andy. All right. So this is the real estate of the month trade, a week trade, I should say. I'll put a little note on here. R-E-O-T-W to the downside. We'll see if we get it. All right. Who knows? But we're in position to do it if we want to do it, if they do it. All right. All right, everybody. Have a great night. I'll talk with you soon. Take care. And we'll see you tomorrow morning.